So in the second part of this sculpting tutorial, we are going to model some high resolution details like uh, you could do for example uh, in the nose, you could do some uh, pimples, some pores, or in some wrinkles in the eyelids for example, but we are going to focus on the legs. In this case, I didn't model the legs with actual reference, like you can see in real life they are completely different. I made more like uh, horse hoof, hoofs and they, are more, they have actually two fingers and I didn't model it properly. But we're going to do some detail anyway, we're going to model some scratches. And for that we're going to use a separate mesh. So let's duplicate with Shift D. And now let's move to another layer with M, the M key, and then move it to the second layer for example. So in the first layer we have our character with the eyes and camera and stuff. In the second layer we only have our new mesh. Now let's delete the upper half. Let's only leave the 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 legs, well the hoofs, <laughs> hoofs. Still have to check how to say that, like horse hoofs. Let's remove that. Now we got this. Awesome. So we're going to add detail here and. For now, until now, we've been using the surf modifier for detail, and okay, you can crank up that uh, that subdivision level, but you will still have the original amount of vertices. You can't edit that; it's just uh, like a subdivision on top of your mesh. So, what we need is another modifier called multi-resolution. It works some in a very similar way. You can subdivide, it uses the same algorithm, uh, Cadmus Clark, for subdividing the mesh. But the difference is that uh, every time you hit subdivide, every phase will be now four phases. And you can have access to this. Uh, you can see actually the, the number of polygons go up really fast. Don't go really <laughs> that much. I went up to six and it starts a bit laggy. Starts to get a bit laggy but five is a good number, depends on your computer, of course. So, and in the amount of vertices you already have, it's, it's a subdivision, it's not a general number. So, let's try some brushes. Not the smooth one, but we're going to use the, uh, we're going to draw on our, we're going to draw on our mesh. So we could use the sculpt draw, for example or the brush one, which just press D to draw, and then you can draw, but we don't want that. We're going to use a mask for that. This is a new feature. This mask brush, but it does, it paints black. Like, that's the first thing you see. It paints black. What does it mean? It means that in every part that is black, then all our um, brushes will not have influence in that part so they don't affect the black part. We're going to use it this uh, more in a more elegant way, just clear it for now from the hide mesh menu, clear mask. We're going to do it the proper way. Let's see first. Let's uh, model something like some wrinkles in the, in the legs, like there. Again, I didn't model this properly, but at least we're going to give this a scratches feeling and some wrinkles maybe. Let's see how it goes. Try not to make it too complicated. So for this, we're going to use a texture. So let's go to the texture panel, create new. By default, it's a clouds texture. We'll just go to the texture properties panel. Then the tab that has the brushes. Yeah, by default, it's on materials. We have to use the brushes. And on texture image, we don't have any. So let's do a, qu a quick one in the GIMP. Well, you can use whatever. And actually, if, if you don't like GIMP, you can just skip this part. Uh, it's not going to be a GIMP tutorial. I just want to make it re real fast. So just delete that layer, make a new one. Uh, I'm going to use the pencil to draw some lines over here. I just want to make a scratches texture. So click, shift, click to make straight lines. 
process real fast. Once I have these lines, it's too much. I'm gonna blur it real fast. Blur, motion blur. I want the motion blur because I want them blurred on the on the edges. That is okay. Okay, now let's add some gray noise. For that, I'm going to block the alpha with that little button on top of the layer buttons. Render clouds plasma. I like this one a lot because it creates this nice noise. I also use it for like rain, for movie rain. So since I block the alpha, it will only affect the, the parts that are actually opaque on our mesh there. Uh, this array, this bit. Okay, and now it's too dark, so let's raise the levels. Well, actually the curves. All the white points, not too black. Okay, enough. Let's save this. This is not a GIMP tutorial. Let's just something quick to use. Okay, okay, okay. I bet you can do it in Photoshop and you know it's real quick too. So let's use that texture as an image. Uh, by default it looks horrible because it didn't have the uh, pre-multiply option for alpha, so it will pre-multiply its alpha instead of showing ugly colors like in the GIMP. So um, by default we're already using that one, but we don't want that actually. Let's uh, Let's use a mask first. So we learned to use this feature, awesome feature from from recent Blender versions, 2.63 or 62, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm painting from the bottom because that way, if I go a little bit on the edges, then the texture will stretch along the shape and it looks cool. You can also see that I'm rotating this texture. That is with Control F. So remember, with Shift F, we change the opacity. With F, we change the size, the radius of this brush. And then with Control F, we're going to um, rotate the texture. It's nice that they all have the same shortcut. So let's change the mapping. By default, I had it in Q, I think. This one is cool, it's a tile. If you click on overlay, on the little overlay eye icon there, every time you mouse over the 3D view, Blender will overlay this brush and it will show you how it would look if, uh, if you were to paint over there. You can rotate, scale, everything. And you can just paint over and you, you see exactly where the texture is going to be, which is really cool. Sometimes it gets annoying, so you can just disable or change the the brush mapping. Back to view plane, so it uses the view as a reference. And now let's paint over, because if we paint, now remove the texture. Okay, it's too much. Now let's paint, and since we made all the scratches in the mask, with the mask brush, now Blender will paint and will draw will modify the mesh on everything except the black parts. So cool, now let's smooth this. So of course, let's remove the mask first. Hide mask, clear mask. And now let's use some other brushes because the resolution of your map, of your texture really uh, really cares here. And also the amount of vertices that you have, it also really cares. So let's make this look a bit nicer with the pinch brush. You can just press P to access. And then you can see it It makes the lines look much more, much better. It looks like if our, tech, our mesh had a lot more resolution because it gets the vertices together. So the lines don't, don't are not that thick anymore, and it's, it's pretty cool. Remember, if you hold Shift, you can uh, switch temporarily to the Smooth tool. So you can like pinch, and if it's too much, then you should hold Shift to smooth a little bit, and then 
back to uh, pinching. I use this tool with low values and strength because otherwise it will push all the vertices around it too harsh and it's not doesn't work well most of the time. So it's nice to go with small values and just keep painting on top of it. So this process was painting with a mask and a texture, all the scratches, then draw on it, then smooth some parts, and then pinch the lines to get, a, to get them a bit more uh, thin. But we can do that with another brush. If you only want to make a little crease, but you don't want a texture or anything, you can use the crease tool, which I think you have to increase the strength. As you can see, the crease will make, a, of course, a crease, but it's much, much more, it's easier to control. So you just draw and then use the pinch to make this uh, crease a bit more thin and detailed. Gives you the feeling that your mesh has a lot more polygons than it, it has, actually. So it's a good combination to use crease and then pinch, then uh, smooth a little bit. Let's see now the different uh, brush mapping options that we have in this stroke. For example, by default, it's in area plane. But if you switch to view plane, all the strokes, whatever you paint, I'm going to increase the spacing here a little bit so it's more clear. If you use view plane, then the brush will use its view as a reference to uh, point its brush towards the camera, towards your view. So. For example, in this case, the, the circles are always pointing towards the camera, and sometimes that's sometimes you want that, but sometimes you don't. So, for example, in uh, the difference with area plane is that you don't have to worry about the camera view. It will always use the direction of the faces as reference to put the, the brush. So, for example, if you do it even from the top view, and just start painting, the brush will use the face direction, so it's, it's nicer. You don't have to worry about the camera view. You can also constrain this to a plane, for example, the Z axis, the, the vertical one, the blue one, remember? So that that way you can make like uh, scales. No, not the one in Sintel, but, but you could actually, but it's also really nice. You can constrain it to certain axis. So another really cool option is uh, the smooth stroke option. For example, did it happen to you that sometimes you want to mo you want to draw something um, like a very specific shape, but Blender is like too precise on the drawing, and you have to uh, do it again and again and again? The smooth stroke option gives you a little delay when you sculpt, and you can see that when you sculpt, you will see a little line is drawn from the point where you started sculpting to where you move your mouse. So now you have this little delay that makes it easier to make a complicated shapes or like a spiral or... If you're already familiar with the curves in Blender, you will not have any issues here by uh, figuring out what this does. Basically, the left side of the curve side of the basically the left side on the curve widget represents the center of our brush like the opacity of our brush while the right side represents the outer part make some examples for example with that curve you can really see the center of the texture but not the borders or the other way around. I 
Another thing you could use is symmetry, but in this case we are using the mirror modifier, so we don't need it. But in case you apply that mirror, it's uh, really, really useful because you only have to sculpt in one side and it will sculpt on the other side automatically, which is really cool. Now let's focus on the texture side. Let's use, for example, the grab No, let's use the clay strips brush for this purpose. That texture, clay strips. Let's see first the brush mapping. The options are pretty similar to the ones we already seen, but now we have the 3D option, which works okay depending on the shape of our of your um, your texture. What is cooler though is the angle option. The angle option lets you change the rotation of your uh, of your brush. For example, the rake option, which is really really nice lets you uh, sculpt and change the rotation of the, your texture according to the movement of your mouse. For example, if I have straight lines, then when I move the mouse, the brush will rotate according to the movement of, this, of, the, of the mouse, which is really nice. You also have random, of course, and the normal user one, but rake, I think, is the best one because of course, depending on what you want to do, but it's really nice if you want to make, uh, like if you want to sculpt hair, for example, uh, stripes, it's really good. Now let's move to the space method. And a space method that you're going to use a lot if you use texture especially, is the anchor option. Because that way you can click and drag to place a texture in a certain position you want. For example, click, drag, and the texture will be right there using as a reference the center of your uh, of your brush. If you use if you enable the option edge to edge instead of going from the center, you you can uh, use some edges as a reference like go from the from that edge to the other side, for example. Which is also nice, it's a, it's a new option. A more common one might be the airbrush option, which if you're familiar with other painting software, you already know this, probably. Basically, the more you leave the mouse, the bigger the effect. Nothing new on that. One I like a lot is the track dot option, because you click and drag on the surface and you can move the texture around. It will be something like anchor, but without the anchor. <laughs> you can click and drag and move the texture around your, your mesh and it's very nice. For example, if you want to place a logo or scratches or you don't want to click and redo, uh, click and undo, click and undo, it's better to use drag thought. So you just place the texture and move them around. It's pretty good. Then you also have dots, which is like placing bits of your texture on your mesh. Shortcuts. In the 3D view, you can hit R, and you will get the three rotation modes, user, rake, and random. The user on one, remember, you can control F to, rot to change the rotation of the brush. And for the space methods, the hotkey is A. So that would be it actually. Um, something else is that you might want to smooth your brushes a lot all the time and there is a tool for that which is called Auto Smooth, but it's not always that fast. It, um, it smooths the brushes after you paint it but it's not always extremely fast so in practice you don't use it that much. It's better to just smooth by yourself and by just holding shape. So that's it. Let's move to the next chapter.